Hi, welcome to my channel. Today, we're gonna to begin our discussion on OpenCV color analysis and manipulation. We're gonna walk through a short script to get pixel HSV values in today's video, and then we'll move on to create a class that gets pixel values in all the color spaces. And then we're gonna move into color detection because if you've been with us long enough, seen our search and rescue drone, we're ready to add color detection so we can have really advanced capabilities. In order to do that, we gotta start with the ground, work our way up. So let's start today by getting some pixel values. Now, if you look here, we have the repo on GitHub. Go ahead and pull it from there and you can have early access to the pixel converter class we'll discuss in the next video. Today, we're gonna to look at this one, get pixel HSB value.py. This is a pixel capture script we have an on mouse function that is going to get our events from our left mouse button. And then we have a simple little script, which opens a capture object from our camera, streams video from our webcam and receives that event from our left clicks, wherever we click on that output window of our video stream. Now, before we get into this, let's go ahead and get an understanding of color spaces and in particular HSV. We've got a nice little PowerPoint prepared. So let's open it up. Let's go and presenter. Well, we're gonna go way past all this because we don't wanna see that. We're gonna start with the HSL and HSV color models. So HSL and HSV, uh, we're gonna stick with HSV, see why. It stands for hue saturation value. So I'm gonna skip down here and start reading the HSL representation models, the way different paints mix together to create color in the real world with the lightness dimension. HSV does this similarly but it models light as we perceive it in the real world. Now, if you'd like to read this in depth, go ahead. But go ahead and look at this little picture down here. We have HSL and HSV. They're slightly different and they're kind of confusing, quite frankly. So if you look at this little circles, we have the bottom of that cylinder and we're gonna be talking about the HSV one. The bottom is really dark and the top is not, but then if you look at the center of that circle, it's quite white. So closer you move to that center, the lighter the color is, or the most, the more it resembles a uh, real white in a real world environment. Closer you move towards the bottom, the more dark is included. And then the farther you move away out from the center of that circle, deeper the colors are. We don't really need to know that because it's kind of confusing if you don't really care about the physics of light and how colors work but I do, and I think you need a little bit of an understanding. So let's go and focus on some key points from that text. In that text, it read, the difference between HSL and HSV is that a color with maximum lightness in HSL is pure white, but a color with maximum value brightness in HSV is analogous to shining a white light on a colored object. Now this is similar to the way we shine lights off objects and we, we don't see a pure white light reflected, but Actually, it's a variation of that color we're shining the light upon. They have a little example here. I'll just say, if you go to the store, shine a light on an apple or something, you're gonna see some red reflecting off that. We see a little more white because there's wax on the apple and that's possibly uh, reflecting more intensity of the white light that we need to go deeper into this to understand that. So let's just point out this last thing. So in the HSL color model, the most bright or the maximum brightness pixel value is equivalent to pure white. In HSV, the max brightness pixel value is equivalent to the white light that was reflected off objects in our real world. Now, here's some a little bit on the physics. Now, if you see here, we have light coming from the sun as light waves, which are actually consistent of all colors on the visible spectrum. So pure white light is in reality, all of the colors in a wave. Yeah. So if you see this water here, when the light rays hit the water, the color we see is blue, it's not white, because in fact, the, the band of the frequency in which is reflected is actually the frequency for blue light. So that's why we see that. And similarly for green light, we see the frequency that belongs to the color green. As every other light frequency that hits the grass, or the green grass, whatever the green object is, Every other color is absorbed except for green. Green is the only one reflected. This has to do with certain uh, material aspects of different substances. We're going to avoid going into that discussion. But to understand the way that our vision works really helps us to understand how 
we can incorporate it with computer vision because they don't have eyeballs <laughs> and uh, ours are pretty cool because they're, they're able to process all of this light as colors in the way that we see it. Now, I'll read this, this little bit here just to kind of summarize. When light interacts with colored objects, the objects typically, typically absorb certain wavelengths of light and reflect others. This is all relates to a physics phenomenon such as absorption, reflection, uh, refraction, and um, the opposite absorption is uh, dispersion. So like a rainbow dispersion of light. So the color we perceive is the result of the wavelengths that are reflected. That's some cool physics. I love physics. I suggest you all go look into some physics of the light because it's really quite fascinating. Let's move on today though. So what are some advantages, disadvantages, and best use cases? Advantages are that it helps us model the way that we perceive light. So this is helpful for computer vision and robotics. And I don't know if you've been keeping up with things. Um, current civilization trying to achieve full autonomous driving. I think uh, for that to be necessarily, or to be, for that to be necessarily possible, then we need to really pair the way in which we see and our human machine bodies are able to process things and be aware of things around us. And we need to pair that with computers such that they really are able to do it in such a way that they can get the same results. But it's a different machine. Our bodies are squishy and fleshy machines, but they're quite, quite nice because we're alive. So that's good. Well, let's move on. So that's the advantage. It's also useful for fine tuning of color information. So when we go move on to color detection, we're going to want to get specific pixel colors or specific colored objects, such as say this red bulb. You see it's reflecting white. It appears it's actually a shade of red as we discussed. So let's go ahead and move on to disadvantages. It's kind of quite complex. If you can't tell from this discussion, that's all there needs to be said about that. Best use cases, adjusting color parameters, which we'll be doing later, enhancing colored based features and image processing. We'll just kind of move on with that and summarize. What are the three values we can obtain from a pixel with the HSV color model? We have hue, saturation, and value, which could be visibility. Uh, that's, that's our whiteness factor. So one final note that the hue range is between zero and 179 for this. And the player has saturation and value can range between zero and 255, similar to how we do it for RGB channels and such. So we'll have to keep that in mind here later when we're receiving color values from our video stream. And that's all I have to say about that. Here's some suggested resources, image processing, changing the color spaces, open CV documentation. Here's some references, uh, Wikipedia, Geeks for Geeks, OpenCV documentation, Dev Genius. Check them out if you like, they help me. So let's go ahead and close out of this. There's the GitHub if you wanna go into there. We're finally ready to move into PyCharm. Let's open it up. We have the whole project here. If you wanna get a leg up on the game, sneak peek at the next video, pixel converter, go ahead. Right now, we're concerned with get pixel HSV value. So you can read the top documentation header here if you want. Don't worry about it if you don't want to though. We're gonna be importing OpenCV and NumPy for this. So all has to relate with image processing and changing the way that we perceive these pixels. Now we have one function here, which is pretty standard for how certain libraries handle mouse events. I do have here OpenCV's documentation, mouse as a paintbrush. It'll explain in here a little bit better on how this function is kind of the default. Check it out if you want to. I have a, uh, detailed comments and function explanations and such here too that explain these. So I'd like to note what it takes in. It takes in an event, and then the X and Y coordinates of the pixel. And then these flags and parameter values we don't need, but they have to be included in the function because this is the, the standard form of the function, which you can find in that last reference OpenCV documentation I talked about. I will note here that the flags and param parameters are necessary because the GUI library calls the callback function, provides information about the mouse events. That's all you need to know. So we're gonna be concerned with the event X and Y. The event is gonna be coming from our left mouse button. X and Y are gonna be getting from the pixel that we click on in our output window. So we pass those in and we're gonna first, we're gonna check if that event was our left mouse button. And this is how we do it. We call cv2.event underscore l button down. 
that refers to our left mouse button being clicked. After that, we're gonna go ahead and create a variable, variable called pixel. We're gonna set it equal to the X, Y position of that pixel in our frame. With that, we'll go ahead and create a variable called HSV pixel, and we'll set it equal to the CV2.CVT color method. And we're gonna use this to convert that pixel from the BGR to the HSV color space so that we can get the values back and print them to our console as such. We'll print HSV dot dot colon, I'm not sure what that's called. And then uh, the list that is essentially our HSV values for that pixel. So that's our function. We're gonna next open up a capture object with our internals webcam feed by, by specifying its argument as zero. And we're gonna do a simple video stream script similar to the functions and methods we've done this with before. It's just in a lot more simplistic uh, form. So we'll start an infinite loop that re reads frames from our capture object, shows them in an output window, and then we're gonna call cv2.setMouseCallback on the frame, and we're gonna put our onMouse function as that other parameter for the mouse callback. So make sure here that the first argument you're calling in the cv2.setMouseCallback is equal to what you title your frame with cv2.imshow. That'll, this is what allows for the on mouse function to know that the set mouse callback is being performed on that output window. After that, we're going to go ahead and have a little if statement just so that we can break out of this loop and destroy the window, release the capture object, and we'll do that if the Q key is pressed. And that's all there is to it. So let's go ahead and run this script and see what happens. I've got three balls here, I've got red, green, and blue. So let's go ahead and hold them up in front of our camera. Let's click around on red here. That's all the red values we got. So let's do blue. We'll see they differ and then green. All right, they differ. So we're getting our HSB values for the pixels on these different colors. Now, why are we doing this? We're gonna be doing this so that we can detect those colors of these specific objects by creating a range of these pixels in which we've retrieved from the objects in our output window. And then using that range, we'll be able to determine if pixels in an output window are contained in that range. And if so, then we know that we've detected that color. We'll be moving on next in the following video by putting this script's functionality into a class such that we can build upon the class and add the color detection. And I think we're gonna take it further, add some filters and other cool stuff. So. If you want to do that, stick around, enjoy the next video. Appreciate your support. Like, comment, share, subscribe, etc. It helps me out. I thank you. Till next time, have a great day.